Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to present you to our guest speaker today, Natalia Kuznetsova. Natalia Kuznetsova is a scientist. She's an inventor. She, uh, she moved from Russia to Amsterdam. And today she's going to share with us her success story of becoming an innovative entrepreneur and succeeding uh, in setting up her own startup in biodegradable materials. What an exciting journey that Natalia had uh, gone through and she continues to go through. Being a Russian, she was focusing on working for the Russian Chamber of Commerce and other business uh, endeavors. And then suddenly she had an internal calling about her, her being the daughter of a Siberian inventor and uh, a calling to do something else, something bigger in, in the world, just, just uh, not just day, day job, but she wanted to touch people's lives and contribute to the sustainable development of, of the world. And I, it's my pleasure today to welcome, on behalf of everybody here all over the world, Natalia Kuznetsova. Please, the floor is yours. Um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you well if you are Dutch. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you for the um, uh, amazing uh, presentation of me. So, yeah, uh, I tell you uh, my story. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, something like in uh, 2008 uh, I finished my first degree it was uh, uh, some kind of uh, financial management and uh, the, my knowledge was about the management so I start my career in the management and uh, in the different companies uh, but uh, in some point uh, I realized that it's uh, not uh, really my way, not uh, what I want to do all my life, sitting uh, at the computer and um, don't uh, actually see the result of uh, your working. So you can't uh, even touch what you do, what uh, you organize and something like this. Yeah, sometimes you have uh, some excitements uh, about the, some events that you organize but uh, in the real life I still uh, feel a little bit uh, sick about it I can't uh, reach uh, my way so and um, <clears throat> of course uh, living in Russia and uh, originally I'm the, from the Krasnoyarsk and uh, if you know this area that uh, Siberia now has uh, some trouble with uh, waste and uh, some trouble with uh, ecology so of course uh, this idea can't uh, go in through me so i just uh, still think uh, how uh, how it uh, how this situation should work so i start my uh, presentation uh, It just uh, first two slides in Russian, but uh, you can understand for sure that it's a lot of uh, tons of plastics uh, we produce. Uh, even uh, you can imagine that the plastic uh, born just uh, 70 years ago and it's already the big trouble. So let's uh, see in a few, uh, few years and it's gonna be worse and worse so and uh, of course the only the small uh, percentages of this uh, plastic can be um, recycled and uh, for now uh, it's only the like new inventions uh, because they exist uh, maybe not more than uh, 20 years it's uh, less than 1% of all amount of the plastic can be uh, biodegradable. So, but uh, the biodegradable plastic has a big, uh, uh, big future, I think, uh, because uh, for sure the biodegradable plastic can uh, replace the 
traditional uh, plastic and uh, most of the application. So I just uh, start to think, uh, think about this and I, uh, of course, uh, uh, was a little bit uh, more uh, open mind and I'm not even looking around in Russia. I look in the, the whole world and I try to find uh, <clears throat> what the solution can be uh, in this uh, place but uh, in some point after the 10 years my uh, uh, career as a manager I realized that uh, I need uh, really more knowledge about the material if I want to really uh, do something with my idea because it's uh, the start some um, startup is not only about the management it's the first uh, it's about the uh, technology and the special idea. So I just uh, look around in Moscow, I find the um, university, the missus, uh, and uh, it was the call for a master's degree. And I entered to this uh, my university. It was master's degree in the, in the material science. So exactly what I need, I, uh, I think. So, and we start working. Of course, uh, as we told a little bit uh, with, uh, without us, uh, so uh, equipment of our university was uh, really uh, old. Uh, it was really good, but uh, it's really old. So we tried to make uh, our own equipment. So uh, I was lucky in my group uh, of the people in the master degree, they also have some um, uh, strong guys who help uh, me to build the very uh, simple um, uh, equipment for uh, try my idea in the real life. So, and of course, lots of kitchen stuff uh, was used uh, because, yeah, we don't have uh, really <clears throat> very smart equipment at the, at the university. And the, uh, the first try of the, my idea was really, really a uh, small amount yeah, because we need just uh, realized if it really can be produced or not. So uh, this uh, I'm going to do uh, the first uh, uh, composite material uh, with the metal and the polymer. So uh, we even grow the metal in the middle of uh, the winter time in our university. So then uh, <clears throat> I collected, I, uh, uh, prepare it uh, just uh, to have a few grams of the composite, uh, but uh, it still works somehow. So, and um, we um, we try to uh, check it, uh, of course, in the Russian uh, laboratory the properties of the material, and it's a uh, lot of lots of uh, research, uh, of course, around this area. And the first result uh, was uh, pretty okay. And um, uh, I start to uh, present uh, my first idea, my the first step, because I uh, just start to believe uh, that my material could be exist in this world. So <clears throat> of course I made a lot of uh, presentation in Russia um, and also a little bit around the world that uh, I was uh, presented my idea in Germany, uh, in Spain, uh, in Italy, in um, Helsinki also. So, and of course, lots of lots of presentation in Russia. But uh, as I realized, uh, especially in Russia, you know, they uh, mostly told me, oh, yeah, that's a good idea, but uh, you can see we have a lot of space in Russia. 
so we can just uh, collect our waste and uh, the, any anyway the biodegradable material it's uh, not uh, cheapest material so we uh, still gonna use uh, just the cheap material because yeah we can <laughs> we uh, mostly focus on the cheap material and uh, if we have lots of place to collect out waste uh, of course uh, just much more easy to collect it. Yeah, I say, okay, no problem. But the difference between the uh, European um, mind and the Russian was completely different. So uh, since the first even presentation on Helsinki, my project, uh, they asked me uh, about the properties of the material, how it can work and what kind of equipment uh, they need to use my material and it's uh, look like they uh, believe in my idea and they just are uh, very interested in this uh, uh, in details so i back to the university uh, after my uh, around the world trip uh, and I focus on the, what I can do with uh, my material, make uh, most uh, of uh, types of the research which we can uh, do in the university. And of course, I finished uh, the master degree with a very, very good mark. And I think, okay, now we have a time for the uh, unicorn, <laughs> unicorn time. If you know the unicorn, it's a uh, a uh, symbol of the startup. So I think, why not? Uh, now or never. So, uh, and uh, in this time, after my uh, master's degree, just in uh, this time, I get the invitation from the Netherlands, from the uh, big uh, Camelot uh, campus in uh, Sittard. So they uh, was really exciting about the, my idea. And uh, they have really uh, like almost like uh, one uh, city uh, with, uh, full of the different uh, chemistry startups and the companies and laboratories. So the, my project is uh, like uh, the best fit for this uh, campus. But uh, the problem was uh, to collect money because uh, to move from the Russia uh, to another country, it's a kind of uh, issue, especially if you're gonna to, uh, build a startup in a, another country. Uh, of course, you need money to open the company in another country. You need money just to uh, stay, live uh, somewhere, yeah, rent the apartment and uh, lots of, lots of, um, problem and task that you need the money so uh, but uh, of course I believe in my idea very much uh, and uh, I see the people around uh, just the normal people just not the uh, government just not the business people just people who also uh, feel that uh, the waste problem is a really good, really uh, big um, problem in Russia they uh, just was really open to help me. So, and um, it was not really easy decision, but uh, in some point I start just ask money uh, because I need to move my idea to the Netherlands. Uh, and uh, it was not just uh, give me money. So I made uh, the all kind of, uh, stuff that I can make from my laboratory samples of the material. I uh, put all my energy and put all my uh, creativity and hand handmade and they use uh, the kind of equipment that we have in the university to just make uh, at least something. So I made uh, some notebook, some uh, pencil, some pen, and uh, some earrings, uh, so some small stuff. 
and the people um, who can just uh, not really I not call it like buy this stuff but they give me money and I give them uh, the present what they want so it's really uh, works uh, I have uh, not so much uh, time uh, I start my company uh, the I call it the fundraising uh, crowdfunding um, so uh, something in, in uh, July and uh, I have to move to the Netherlands uh, in September so it was uh, two months <clears throat> but uh, of course I uh, not even the sale the my uh, stuff I also uh, collect uh, all my money and ask uh, my uh, family to help me but the, finally i have uh, <laughs> something around 10000 euros and go to the netherlands uh, with just one uh, bag uh, which was broken in the first of uh, flight it was uh, mostly full of the, my uh, metal stuff <laughs> so it was really fun. Uh, I came to the Netherlands and it was really small room and uh, but it was a big 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 uh, campus with different uh, companies. Uh, it's not really allowed to make pictures of this campus because it's lots of the um, chemistry companies that I secretly um, here but uh, just believe me it's like uh, the big uh, city full of uh, manufacturers and the production lines and buildings of the uh, chemistry companies so of course in the netherlands the first what i uh, buy <laughs> my safety money it was the bicycle uh, and uh, we start to work so it was was the first uh, three months of very intensive uh, accelerator program then uh, where the people uh, the experts in the chemistry and the uh, polymer industry uh, of course um, and uh, some of them from the business uh, they think uh, how to start uh, my idea how to uh, bring uh, my idea to the life so it was really uh, very 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 intensive and lots of work and of course lots of uh, again uh, new technologies that I have to manage it of course I uh, have my previous uh, uh, education and the management but it was completely different because if you want to start a startup it's not like uh, you are just gonna start a normal business because it uh, has uh, different periods of lives and uh, you start your startup even before uh, you <clears throat> can pretend to have uh, money from your product so it's really the few stages then you can't uh, even sell something you just uh, make research and uh, you have to understand how to attract the first uh, customer and stuff like this so it's really a uh, big work but uh, it was a really good challenge for me and also to learn uh, English very good to be uh, sure that I can present my idea to the experts at least uh, so yeah it was really a lot of teaching and uh, sometimes uh, it was a success <laughs> pitch uh, so and after um, the accelerator program uh, I uh, apply for the first uh, grant for the first uh, foundation uh, in the Netherlands. It, it uh, they have a special uh, fund for uh, startups, which uh, has a really really early idea, 
mostly like uh, idea so and uh, they give you money to uh, like finish your research so you to understand if it's uh, real possible what kind of uh, properties the material have and something like this so i receive this uh, money and i start to work in a really uh, good uh, laboratory with uh, very new equipment and uh, of course with the people who used to work with this uh, equipment and of course yeah that's uh, that's a show a uh, little bit the equipment uh, which uh, i work uh, in the netherlands it was really good uh, equipment as you can see uh of course it's not uh, it was completely uh, different uh from the equipment that we have at the university So yeah. So that's uh, how it works. Uh, so it's an injection molding machine. Uh, it's a compounder uh, machine. Um, yeah, and this is a um, uh, extruder uh, machine. We also made uh, the um, material for the 3D printer out of uh, my uh, composite. So, um, of course, um, in some point when uh, you can see that uh, you can even uh, touch uh, your material, not in the some grounds, but in the one kilogram, and you can even uh, made something out of this and the equipment not uh, bump, not stuck. And uh, I can see it's uh, really work. So of course, we made lots of uh, research about the material, uh, but uh, I'm uh, very happy that uh, now we finished the research and we know everything about this material. So I now, for me, it's a new challenge to just uh, bring this material to the uh, Netherlands market. So now I'm in a stage on the planning the next uh, stage to the get to the market. Uh, I have uh, some partners in the uh, Netherlands uh, who help me with uh, my uh, idea so especially the, who can uh, uh, introduce the, my product to the first customer so and uh, now i'm just waiting for the new uh, branch of the grant new money uh, for the next uh, stage uh, but uh, i can uh, tell you that uh, I, I start my uh, project in uh, 2017 and uh, I stay in Russia uh, for more than two years with this project and we don't have uh, such progress. But here for one year even uh, I will reach uh, a lot of uh, points. So we made the material in the real equipment. So uh, we really checked uh, this material. And uh, it's really, I'm not uh, say that it's uh, completely easy to make a partners in uh, Europe, but the companies are more open for the startups idea. So, and uh, I feel uh, uh, myself and my project more 
um, good and more reasonable, re reasonable uh, in the Netherlands than in Russia, uh, unfortunately, but uh, it is what it is. So, um, yeah, that is uh, my story for now. And uh, if you have a question, uh, you can ask me. I also know lots of information about um, the startup visa application uh, and yeah, what you need to know to the uh, go to the another country <clears throat> because it was a step by step uh, for me also to uh, to get this uh, knowledge from experience. So of course it not uh, that easy how it can be if you know the language but but it's uh, it's a really good experience i like it so yeah that is my story maria yes natalia thank you so much for sharing it's such an inspirational story and very very beautifully composed by you uh, we see that we have some people joining, um, and I would like to thank Anna, Lorenzo, and Steve for joining us in due course during your presentation. Anyone has any questions for Natalia? Okay. Yes, please. Okay, well, uh, first of all, congratulations, Natalia. So, and uh, I wish you the best of luck to continue with your project, and then hopefully it will get successful. And uh, I have a few questions about your, your, your business and, and your activity. Excuse First me, can of... I ask Natalia to remove the, the, uh, you know, the nettle picture? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. So first question would be, uh, did you get funding for now, I, as I understood, it's crowd crowdfunding just for your next step in your business. So it means for a production or you already have and you're looking for a next, so to say, uh, funding to 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 scale up your business and or, or like at what stage of funding you are right now? This is the first question. I will get to the other questions later. Okay, so this is a good question uh, about the money. And um, yeah, as I told, I start uh, to uh, get money and uh, try to uh, receive money in, uh, in Russia. So um, it was the first 10,000 to help me to just uh, remove from the Russia to the Netherlands. The next uh, foundation was the 50,000 K from the Netherlands government uh, to uh, feasibility stage that the feasibility, it's mean that you have to um, make uh, the full um, research of your uh, potential uh, product. And uh, that's uh, why I like uh, the Netherlands system about the startups, not only because they have a special visa for startup, uh, but also they have a very clear, clean um, system uh, about uh, the growing uh, startup. So they have a first uh, foundation every time. It's a feasibility stages for the research. When you finish the feasibility uh, research, you can apply for the next uh, stage. The next stage is the prototyping. So in my case, it's uh, the prototyping stage. It's about uh, to produce at least uh, 100 kilos of the material and try this material in the different uh, companies to replace their normal plastic in their um, production chain. So <clears throat> uh, it's uh, for the, um, it's also the 50K for this uh, kind of uh, stage of prototyping. And uh, after the prototyping stage, they have uh, also the few options. So it's um, some kind of uh, 
two different uh, loans, one from the government, one from the uh, the bank, the Rabobank uh, loan for the startup, who are going to scale up uh, the idea from the uh, prototype to the first customer. So, and also uh, it uh, could be an option to get um, special uh, funding from uh, European Union uh, because they also have uh, the few options in this stage how to get uh, to the market from the prototype. So, and um, <clears throat> of course, for the next uh, stages, it could be the investors' money, and it's like, yeah, different, uh, also different options. So, uh, and uh, you can see it in the Netherlands, it, uh, the, this uh, like schedule for the foundation is open and every startup can uh, get this money. Not completely easy, of course, you can, uh, you can uh, really say that your idea, why it's innovation, why you gonna be a good, uh, why you can make the good business out of this, but uh, still it's uh, open system and uh, all startups can just uh, understand how they can uh, grow here. So there's a huge uh, difference between the Netherlands and the Russia, because in Russia, it's quite, quite difficult to uh, um, get your first money, especially from the government. Yeah, because, yeah, lots of uh, foundation has uh, big uh, troubles with the corruption and something like this. And of course, I was trying to apply for the grant uh, when I was in Russia uh, two years ago. And uh, just, um, the Russian government uh, say me really in the face, like Russia has no trouble with the waste. So we still have lots of waste. It's like uh, your application, it's like nothing for us because it's not our problem at all. So why we should give you money? So yeah, that's, uh, that was really painful that time. But then I came to the Netherlands and they say, yeah, yeah, of course, the bio-based uh, material that we're exactly looking for, of course, uh, we're just uh, waiting for you and be open to give you money. Yeah, especially if you uh, can make the research and uh, be sure that this really works. So it's uh, the old way is open. So can I ask two more questions related to what you already told? Yeah. So first question would be, uh, I understood at what stage you are. So my question, first question would be, what happens if your project financially not profitable? So that's one. So it means uh, how the funds and everything, the, the money you already got uh, invested what will gonna happen with you with your project and that money? That's question number one. Question number two, did you research on your compet competitors in Europe? Because I know even in Lithuania, we have startups who already do this product. And we, for example, packaging the, the, the uh, products for a food in that packaging. But the problem we have, because it is too expensive, much, much more expensive than typical plastic, they have problem with scaling and they are kind of stuck, you know, yeah. so they, it's not very much people not interested because it's difficult to make a profit. Yeah, that's also the great question. The first, um, the risk about uh, the startup. So that's also the good uh, situation in the Netherlands. Uh, Everybody, even in the government, they understand that uh, if they give you money, uh, in some point, uh, maybe you can't reach your points. Yeah, maybe you can just uh, fall, fall in. But 
for this, uh, they understand this risk, but they are risky people. So they decide uh, just uh, give a small money because 50,000 K for the Netherlands is like really just uh, for play. So, and even if you not reach uh, all points that you m m mentioned in your uh, application, so they just say, okay, it was our risk, we take it. But yeah, for the next uh, stage, it will be not easy to ask uh, another money. So, but it uh, was not my case, but still, uh, for, the, for now, if I can't reach uh, my points, I still just say, okay, sorry for the government and the government say, okay, we uh, was try, we believe you, but yeah, so for, it, you have to just stop your project. Yeah, the same with the uh, loans, even with the loans for the next stage. Yeah, when I already make my prototype and then I, uh, try to uh, interact the first customers and it's uh, here like loan it should be uh, back to the government but in really in real uh, life in the contract we just have uh, the special point about if uh, in a few years the startup going to be uh, bankrupt uh, or falling down uh, so it's also the risk of the government so this is uh, also very good uh, to try and to start your startup uh, because you know that it's not only your risk uh, it's uh, risk your and the government because the government very uh, interested in the new technology and that's uh, that is a good point. So uh, the second question about the my competitors, of course, uh, <clears throat> we know uh, a lot of companies uh, around the, even the Europe uh, who work with some kind of uh, composite material and the bio based uh, materials. Yeah. And uh, of course, we look in, uh, on it and we see the problem. And it can even uh, help uh, me also and the government of the Netherlands also because uh, if uh, already on the market a few uh, projects, uh, they can easily believe uh, that you also can do something the same, but they have more deeper question about the difference yeah, between you and the other startups because also, when uh, you try to start this uh, uh, presentation in uh, in Russia, and the government say, "Oh, we have not, no, uh, we don't have any other uh, typical project in the Russia," so the, probably it's like not possible uh, at all to make it. So, and they just don't believe in you in the first point. And in Netherlands, of course, they have uh, some project. And, uh, but uh, the difference uh, between the my project and the uh, other projects, uh, because of uh, the nettle itself has uh, more, um, more interesting properties. The fiber of the nettle, it's, a, it's not my invention, uh, even it's like in the book you can find, the fiber of the nettle is the most strongest fiber in the world. But uh, not a lot of people like to work with uh, the nettle uh, because uh, there are some issues on the production line. But in, in my technology, we find a way to just um, uh, just uh, do it in a very easy way. And uh, also, we joined to another project in the Netherlands. They uh, also work with the nettle. And they um, they grow nettle and they use the nettle for their um, project. So their project about the crop protection. So they uh, make the liquid out of nettle and they uh, use this liquid to protect uh, the roses and other flowers on the field. 
uh, and they don't need the rest of the plant. So, and this is also good uh, uh, matching uh, with them. So we just uh, take their waste and processing it. Uh, and uh, the properties of the end material, because of my, uh, let's say, uh, IP technology, um, we can make this material uh, very strong and uh, the less uh, sens sens sensitive uh, to uh, heating. So, and we mostly focus not on the uh, packaging industry, we focus on the, some technical parts. Like for example, if you look uh, around at your home, you have the vacuum cleaner, uh, who also made uh, from plastic, yeah? You can uh, see in your car, you have a lot of plastic in, in, inside your car. And uh, if, uh, of course, we made uh, some research about this. And the research was about really uh, for the packaging industry, we have uh, actually in Europe and around the world uh, some um, solution like just okay make from the oil plastic but make it recyclable is also the good solution so you can just uh, recycle uh, your packaging and it's uh, good but uh, if you look at uh, the technical uh, plastics there are a lot of uh, also in the market and the use uh, as it all everywhere. So in the computers and uh, all like electronical stuff and they are not uh, recyclable at all. And uh, for now the people just uh, hit this uh, problem because they think, okay, the bottles uh, has more waste uh, and the packaging has more waste, but if you look at the whole amount of the plastic, it's like the small part is used for the packaging. The more plastic used in another industry. So, and we focus on the technical uh, applications. So that's uh, where our, uh, where another company can go because they don't have enough properties of their material but properties of the natural composite material can reach these points. So, and uh, of course, in the market of the technical parts, the material costs much more. So that it's more uh, economically available. Well, thank you so much, Natalia, for making it so easy for us to understand and uh, really breaking it down for us in uh, simple layman terms. Ladies and gentlemen, any more questions from the audience, please? Well, <clears throat> I wanted to say, uh, if I may, it's actually uh, not a question, it's uh, just, just some information. So first of all, thank you very much for the very interesting presentation. I'm, I'm, I'm a freelancer and I have been a freelancer for many years. And um, I actually also started it in a foreign country uh, for me, and the presentations like like um, this one uh, are always interesting for me. I just wanted to give uh, some information for uh, Natalia. Uh, yeah, congratulations on your success. Um, if you need just any kind of uh, language support, um, I have been working with languages in um, business and uh, technical area for over twenty years um, with companies with uh, uh, small or middle businesses like you. So um, we'll be happy to help. Um, I'm a language trainer. Um, I also have been teaching English. I'm a certified English trainer. I have been doing it for 20 years, also work with uh, companies and um, individuals. I have been working with Migle and uh, Commerzbank and a lot of companies. So uh, please, and I also do a lot of uh, interpreting and translation, translations and simultaneous translations in the technical area. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just wanted to give you this information. Thank you very much. Uh, because yeah, the language is a 
one of the um, big uh, issue <laughs> when you move into the another country. I know, I know, because I I, uh, I have been working a lot with um, uh, companies, um, Russian speaking people, um, because my native language is Russian. I originally come from Ukraine. And I'm working with um, uh, Russian, um, English, and German. I, I live in Germany. Um, yes, and this is what I have been doing. I know that. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> <of> my job. <laughs> uh, right now, I know that Natalia is also learning Dutch, which is a very interesting language and worth to learn, I think. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. I think it's a great mixture of the Saxon languages over there. Anna, thank you for the information we'll be using your services for sure and um, this is a very good platform to exchange contacts and network and um, so N Natalia keep us posted about your progress your success this uh, video will be shared on internet and everyone will be able to reach out to me and then I will put in touch with you if necessary and um, what can we say as a final note for closing our lecture today if you have no more questions. Um, well, I'd we like have some questions. More questions? Yeah, more questions? just a moment. From uh, Lorenzo. Lorenzo, you so, have a question? Yeah, he sent me the uh, private uh, message about the, uh, if I use any other material uh, except uh, the metal. Uh, so yeah, uh, we was tried a few, uh, made a few experiments with uh, another materials, but uh, as I told, for now we just focusing on the metal because it's the uh, most uh, uh, good uh, properties of the metal uh, material. But uh, for the future, we also uh, think maybe we can uh, implement our technology to the another grass, but uh, when we talk about the other grass, we talk about the less uh, properties of the material. So that's a uh, little bit uh, should be changed the business for the grass. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks very much for answering my question. Uh, by the way, just very quickly, you know, you, you talked, you discussed the differences, uh, the different approach uh, taken by you know the the Russian government and the you know the, the Dutch authorities as well as the Dutch private sector. Don't you think that you know actually um, this this kind of attitude also affects the the country's development as a whole? You know, um, yeah, I think that you know as you know the you know Russian economy is the Russian economy has many issues and the like. But don't you think that you know some of that may may be down to this kind of approach and mindset? Oh, Lorenzo, uh, we are like staying out of politics and uh, we cannot oh. really discuss politics right in, in this platform. So it's, it's about the success story. So before yeah, successor, I see. Uh, but I think, yeah, but, yeah, but my, 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 my question was about the economy. I think, you know, that the, the reason why the, the Netherlands is such a successful country, regardless of politics, has to do with this kind of approach. You know, yeah, that's, it's uh, the mindset, but the politics we cannot discuss. But of course, the mindset you can. You know, but talking about the mindset, it's it's <laughs> well, the, the politics. The mindset infl influences the politics. But you know, um, I was, uh, I don't know what what the most interested in is is the mindsets, regardless of whether it's a, a kind of, uh, you know, I think that's the, the reason why countries such as Denmark and the Netherlands have been so successful has to do with this kind of mindsets. Absolutely, that's that's a very philosophical question. How do you measure success? Right now, we can measure success uh, personally for Natalia, but for the country, of course, we lost Natalia and she's gone to Netherlands. And uh, you know, this is an example of um, the best brains leaking and uh, leaving our country to go and establish uh, themselves in uh, in uh, successful countries, as you say, Netherlands and uh, America. Yeah, yeah, because actually, the Netherlands and Denmark attract. As you said, you know, so to speak, uh, uh, dynamic brains from all over the world, not just Russia here, but from all over yeah. the world, really, from all five continents. And, and, uh, and I think this explains their economic success, this kind of mindset. You answered, you answered your own question. It's great, Lorenzo. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's good. Yeah. Okay. So wishing success to Natalia, hoping that uh, she will do be, um, you know, her best to come back to Russia when she's successful to set up maybe an office, a representative office of her company in Russia. 
help Russian economy and create job opportunities for young Russian people, young scientists. And uh, we keep this dialogue going because it's an inspiration for all of us around the world because Natalia is also a beautiful woman and she is not only a scientist, which means that uh, it's, it's actually fairly, fairly balanced in all different ways, you know, in gender equality, um, you know, all these uh, boxes are basically ticked because, uh, because of Natalia. So I thank you very much for being great audience, absolutely amazing audience today. And we look forward to seeing you, uh, you know, maybe in a couple of months to catch up with Natalia and hear about her product and, and maybe become her buyers and buy her product in the future. Yeah, that's well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you.